Hello everyone, this is Angie at Stampin' with Amore and today is card day and I'm sharing another technique. I've really, really um, been looking back at different techniques that I haven't seen for a while and I'm trying to share them with you because there's so many fun techniques out there. So anyway, this is called the spotlight technique and I have a little twist on it because usually you will use cardstock for the spotlight but I am actually using window sheet for it in my blends and I thought it turned out absolutely beautiful I love this technique it is so fun to do and I am using the good morning magnolia and I needed a birthday card so this is the card I'm sharing today so I don't know if you can see but I'll show you how this is done it's really really I'm um, pretty simple and really fun to do because coloring on the window sheet is a lot different than coloring on your cardstock. All right, let's get started with this. This may be a little bit longer because of the technique. So you're going to need a piece of thick whisper white for your card base. It's five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm matting it with some rich razzle berry, although I'm using blackberry bliss to color because the color is not really true when you color on the window sheet. So this is uh, Rich Razzleberry and it's five and three eighths by four and one eighth. And then you'll need a piece of cardstock. This is the one we're going to stamp our image on and this is five and a quarter by four. And then you need a piece of window sheet that is five and a quarter by four. You really don't need a whole piece of window sheet, but I found this is the easiest way to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is stamp our image. I have it mounted on here. You can use your Stamparatus or if you have one of the bl big blocks, um, use the big block for that. So we are going to ink this up with Memento Black. And we're gonna stamp our image this one's going to go in the middle, but we are going to stamp around um, the image it also to fill in the areas. So I'm stamping that right in the middle. And we are going to re-ink. And I'm really re-inking just the top part because I'm going to be setting these around in different areas. I'm going to do this side first. I'm going to try to just fit the stamp around there. Try to fill as much area as I can. So this is where you're going to get it on your piece here, but don't worry about it. And then we're going to just stamp down here as well. Just trying to fill in all the area. There, and then I think I'm just going to bring in a couple leaves here. Leaves. another one up here. I just want the whole thing pretty much covered just like that. Alright I am going to clean off the Memento Black although I don't really have to but because I am going to be using stays on for the window sheet. This tends to work a lot better because the Memento will bleed really bad and the the stays on doesn't bleed quite as much as the um, memento does. You still have to be very careful when coloring, but we are going to take the stays on ink now and we're going to ink this up. And I'm inking the whole image to stamp on the window sheet. Now, I, when I did this, I actually used some 
purple tape here and I just taped it down so it stays in place for me. And then I'm just going to stamp this on here. Right on that window sheet. And when you do this, lift straight up to get your image. Okay, so now we can remove our tape. And we have our image on here. Now, earlier I took my heat tool and I heated it to try to make it dry a little bit faster. But um, it looks like it's pretty dry right now. I'm going to actually just set it here so I can color where there's not a lot of want to really be able to see. All right, so I'm using a light and dark Blackberry Bliss, light and dark, um, I think this is Old Olive. No, Mossy Meadow, and then for the center, I am using the Dark Mango Melody. So I'm just going to color that first. And if you can do this a couple ways, you can just color it, or you can just like tap your areas where you want the dark. It works easier and try not to go over the black parts of your image because it can run. So wherever you want the dark, do the dark and then I'm just going to take the light and you're going to just, it just leaves a little bit of a different look. You can definitely just color it like this. It goes much faster to just color it, but you want to be careful of the lines. If you pounce like I'm doing here on this, um, you will get a more smooth, but I love the way it looks kind of watercolor. And it dries really fast on here, the alcohol marker. So I'm just doing all the light and then I'm going to go back with the dark. All right, I think that I've done enough here. I could go crazy and just play with this forever, but I'm just going to leave it like that, and we're going to move on to the, the um, mossy meadow here. We're going to do that the exact same way. Wherever you want the dark, just put the dark. And wherever you want the light, put the light. And I'll probably just speed it up because you know now the technique in doing this. Okay, I think I am done with coloring the image. So whenever you're done, just clean off your tip on your um, on your markers because it will pick up some of the black on it. So just make sure you clean each one of them, the tips, on there. All right, so you can, this is going to overlay on here. But what we're going to do next is we are going to bring the big shot up here and I'm going to use my layering circles and this one is three inches, maybe three and a quarter, but I think it's a three inch circle once it's cut out. So let's bring the big shot up here and we are going to cut our image. Now I'm going to cut because I want mostly the flower part to be showing but I want to capture some of the leaves too so I'm going to kind of center it there and then we're going to run it through. And 
and then we have our little spotlight piece. It is so pretty once you put it up against your image. Now you have to find which way it goes. And on this one it goes right there. Isn't that so pretty? And then the way that I am going to adhere this is I'm using some of my multi-purpose glue here. And I'm using a sponge and I am going to adhere this just like I do vellum. I'm just putting it on, just dabbing, dabbing it onto the back of this. And then make sure before you place it, you have it all lined up the way that you want it before you press it down. Because it is very sticky on the back. And you want to make sure you have it lined up just right. And then just give it a press. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that so pretty? I just think it is such a fun technique. All right, so let's mat it. Now we're going to mat that to our, you don't even need a sentiment on here, I think, but I did need a birthday card, so I made it a birthday card. So I'm matting that on there, and then we're gonna mat this to our card. I like the wet glue for this, so I have time to move, because there is very little space around each one of these layers. And then I'm going to use a piece of basic black. I'm using the Happy Birthday from the music from my heart. I love the script writing on here. I thought it was fancier for this card. It needed some kind of a script. And then this is the Good Morning Magnolia. It is a two um, box stamp set. All right, now I'm going to use my Bossing Buddy. And we are going to stamp the happy birthday with some Versamark. So we're using a wide variety of inks here. I'm going to stamp that in the middle. And then I'm using my white embossing powder. We, got, we are going to emboss this. Make sure I have enough on there. And I'll bring up my heat tool and we will emboss that. Okay, it's all embossed and ready to go on our card. I am going to shorten this. And I think I'm going to trim the bottom just a hair. There we go. Alright, I'm going to use some wet glue. And we are going to put it at the bottom of this card. Right there. And there you have it. Isn't that pretty? I thought it turned out so pretty. And here's the other one. See how you can go crazy with the colors on it? Um, but they're both really, really pretty. So you can, they're gonna, it's going to turn out different every time you do it because of the way that you color it. So there you have it. I hope you all have a blessed day. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications each time I upload a new video. Be watching because every week on Tuesdays I'm going to be trying to share a technique. I have been doing it for the last like three or four weeks. If you need any supplies, this is my new May hostess code. You can shop right from my blog at stampingwithamore.com. Have a blessed one everyone. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.